I was doing it again. My mind wandered. Taking in details and thoughts that aren't all that relevant. I'd say it wasn't useful for survival, but my observations have saved my life time and time again. I suspected that would be the case this time. It was less observation and more delaying the inevitable. I had two options, go further into town or try and break through the blockade. Considering I wasn't toting a Gatlin gun, I only had one real option, so I went back through the alleyway and made a break for it. I passed a single street before I ran into a patrol. Unfortunately, I was halfway between the streets when they came around the corner, and I was looking in the wrong direction. But so were they. So we were both pretty damn surprised when we made eye contact. There were five of them. Nobody had their weapons ready. Perhaps they didn't even think I would head deeper into town. We all froze. I could smell the scent of debauchery, of horse shit and gunpowder. I could see the emotions in their eyes, a large a collective realization that there was no way they could get me before I got at least one of them. I could hear yelling and screaming and even the occasional gunshot, presumably at some poor bastard who looked too much like me. The moment passed, and I shot first. My first shot took the lead man. Hat flying off as it hit him right in the skull. I thumbed my Colt as I lowered it and took the second man in the chest. The revolver was by my hip now and I used my pointer and middle fingers to fan the hammer, sending third and fourth shots into the respective guts. The fifth shot got off, and so did I. Neither of us missed. He took my dominant arm, blowing straight through the elbow. I took him through the crotch, severing an artery. We both screamed. I would love to say that my scream was more bestial roar of pain. <sighs> But this was a girly screech, unfortunately. It was reversed. Perhaps it was less the pain and more the realization that without my shooting arm, the deal was done. I was going to die here. My coat fell out of my hands. I dove to grab it with my left. The nameless man who took my arm looked enraged and raised his rifle with shaky hands, presumably to get one last laugh. I raised my gun to finish him off and pulled the trigger and I heard the dreaded click. Oh, I forgot about the guy I shot in the alleyway. Shit. It was an awkward angle to hold a rifle and it was shaking like a leaf, so of course he didn't hit his intended target, which was my chest. He hit my kneecap instead and fell to the ground. Due to his awkward position on the rifle, the recoil jerked out of his hands, and it hit him in the head, knocking him out cold. Which was actually pretty damn funny, so I laughed at it. It was less a laugh and more of a choked wail, but I digress. I could hear the rest coming. Smoke filled the air from several shots that had been fired. It felt familiar and comfortable, and reminded me that I still had some smokes left of my own, and I figured... Now would be a good time to use them. I holstered my empty revolver. A second holster rests in the front of the belt opposed to the hip as it angled for the right hand draw. So it took some wrangling to get it in there with my left hand and I managed. I didn't want to get it all dirty for the lucky bastard who looted it off my corpse. I hope they appreciate the engravings. Those were expensive. I could hear them approaching, but I wasn't too worried about them shooting. I was clearly not a threat, and they get more of a reward if I'm alive. <sighs> have to have their show, after all, executing the famous outlaw in the Frontier Classic. Shouts of, hey, he's over here! Do we shoot him? And what not drowned out together as the mass of bounty hunters approached. Well, I say that, but it seems like this is less a bounty hunt and more of a lynching because most of these people are clearly locals. I reached for my pack of smokes, only to find it soaked in blood. Ugh. Maybe I shouldn't have stabbed the tavern keeper. Probably wasn't worth it. I heard footsteps approaching, a single pair standing out from the others, expensive stirrups making their telltale jingle on the owner's 
as they slaunted over towards me. I had a sneaking suspicion I knew who it was, and said suspicion was quickly confirmed. Flint Jones! A good friend of mine taught me the word nemesis. I took a quiet shine to it. Described our relationship pretty damn well, despite him being fifty, twenty years my senior. He was wearing fancy, colorful clothes, and he stood out like a city girl in a barn dance, and he knew it. He thrived off this constant smirk with any indication of how he felt. So much for being taken alive. Need a smoke? I asked Flint. Appreciate it, though I'm afraid I'm too poor for your brands. His smirk grew wider, and I'm afraid you might just be right. He looped his fingers through his belt. There you are, lying in the dirt at my feet. I seem to remember informing you of this specific series of events would come to pass. Remember that? Yep, I confirmed, remembering it vividly. Great. Now, well, took quite a lot more time and effort than I anticipated, but some things are inevitable. Yep, I confirmed he was right. You know... When I pictured this moment, I imagined me gloating over you and your look of shock and despair. Defeated after a prolonged gun battle, he explained, his voice disappointed. He raised his hands theatrically. One for the history books. I coughed and I just killed ten people in less than five minutes. What the hell do you want from me? He laughed. A legend! Legends don't get killed by random fools. They get killed by the bigger legends. Don't stereotype me. He sighed. That's a pretty big word for you, good lord, if only you were more like your father. Couldn't be less like him if I tried. He scoffed. <laughs> oh, you did try. You spent your entire life trying. Why? He was one of the finest rangers around before dying in a glorious gunfight. Why didn't you want to be like him? Well, I'm pretty sure it was a tavern brawl. He ignored me. And took to his knees, looking me in the eyes. You spit on his legacy and you carry his old gun. You do him no justice, boy. I coughed up blood. Guess the shot to the back wasn't so light after all. It didn't matter. Are you going to yammer or shoot me? I'm going to do both, you pathetic fool. He stood back up suddenly, looking... Genuinely angry, he drew his gun as the crowd watched the drama with bated breath. Good story to tell. A sheriff settling an old grudge on a formerly infamous outlaw. I wondered if it will be worth remembering. He leveled it at me, look on his face much like one would have when putting down a lame horse that belonged to someone else. Pity. He could have been more. He stated finally. It was true, as much as I hated the man, he was the one with the people, wearing clean clothes and with a clean conscience. There I was covered in muck and blood and bleeding out of some nameless town of the ass end of Texas nowhere. I was... Ah, oh, hell. I had no family or anything that I cared about. So I thought about my guns. I hope whoever takes my colt appreciates how many lives were reaped with it. I hope Flint takes my father's gun, the only one left who would appreciate the significance. Now, oh, foolish as it is, I look Flint in the eyes. It's about to... Son of a bitch didn't even have the decency to let me finish my sentence.